Well, g'day. Welcome to Studio Shed. About a year ago, I was uh, on a course over at uh, Williamstown, uh, run by Ideal Tools, and it was a whole table course. And for those who have seen the photos, I ended up with a, well, I'm very happy with the result. It was a, a, a top of, uh, I believe, a mahogany, and I put in a, a river of jarrah through it. And that required me to have actually cut a pattern uh, out of the original timber and then cut the same pattern out of the jarrah to be able to actually put the two together. So I kept the original pattern, uh, which I still have here, and uh, it was actually going to be quite a, a useful pattern for me to uh, use for this demonstration today. So what I've done here is I've uh, created a bit of a riser, as you can just see, it's uh, just a bit of hardwood. And I've used a Craig pocket hole jig uh, just to put a few screws in it and to secure it down to the table. And then I've uh, again used some of the, the Craig um, Robertson screws to actually secure the pattern to the top of it. So that's nice and stable. Um, and what the benefit of that is, is it raises it up so that I don't have to use an extremely long pin to uh, translate this pattern into my new, new timber. Um, obviously the, the longer the things are, the more there's an opportunity for um, flex and, and things. So by raising the pattern up I get uh, a really good control over the uh, torque work centre. Now what I've done with the torque work centre itself, um, obviously I've still got my router, it's got a, uh, just a straight bit in it. Uh, I've measured the, uh, the depth of plunge so that once it punches all the way through the timber and out the bottom, I've set my depth stop for that. And I've just brought it down basically to the tabletop and then just adjusted the, uh, the pin position. So that's my plunge depth, maximum plunge depth that I want. And I'll be doing this in a couple of passes, two or three. I've then also put on the, the uh, torque work set a copy attachment and this pretty much gives me control over the router through two dimensions. Could be three dimensions if I actually unlock that I could be going up and down as well but in this case I don't need that, uh, that third dimensional control. And the copying pin that's here will actually follow the outside of the pattern and obviously then that will translate directly into the, uh, the timber. Now, getting a bit of a, a bit of a squeaky here there is actually just the, uh, the pin rubbing on the timber itself. Um, so it just happens to be a, I don't know, I'm just setting up a bit of a harmonic there which is a bit unusual. Um, in the longer term, I have been uh, advising to uh, talk work centers to actually put a, uh, a small bearing, uh, not actually dissimilar to router bit bearings, on the end of the copier pin, which will make it even nicer to, uh, to run over the pattern. But at this stage, it's just a rubbing uh, effect, and it's still perfectly functional. So that's about all uh, we need to talk about. Um, I'm obviously I'm not locking down the X or the Y direction because I've got control over that with the, uh, the copy attachment and my pattern. Um, and I'll just use the plunge depth to give me uh, two or three passes to, uh, so I'm not overloading anything. And uh, the only other thing I've got, I've actually held the, the piece of original timber down with a couple of the Festool clamps um, through the table. And I just happen to know that this one down this end is actually just bumping on the dust guard. So when I get close to that, I'll probably actually um, look at detaching the dust. Uh, if I was going to do this for like repeated runs or, or um, uh, obviously not for a demonstration, I'd probably look at another way of actually attaching it down, uh, at least so it wasn't going to interfere with the, uh, the running of the router. Now the other reason why I've actually mounted the pattern over the edge is the way the pin itself has got um, no restrictions on its plunge depth and it can just, it's just overhanging the table and but the only thing I've had to make sure is that my riser that I've used here isn't too high so that the copy attachment doesn't actually bottom out on it before the, the route is punched through the bottom of the table or punched through the, um, the top that I'm trying to cut but uh, once you've got that set up once then you can use that riser for all your other jobs in this case I've found that I've made the, uh, the copy, uh, well that uh, riser 75mm high and that seems to be uh, a pretty good um, starting point for the, the height of the uh, pattern riser. So without further ado let's uh, get in there and just make a, a copy of this pattern into my, uh, my timber there.
And there we have the, uh, the pattern duplicated into the, uh, the new timber. Now I could have chosen my feed direction a, a bit better, uh, taking a bit more of account of the, uh, the grain and the, which way the grain is going. But as a uh, general rule, that is an exact copy of the original uh, template. And I could repeat that over and over, um, either making multiple parts such as this. And uh, in the case of the, uh, the whole table that I made, it would be very easy for me then to make the, a corresponding cutout for the other side. And uh, also the, the insert jarrer as well, to, or if I was using jarrer again, um, to actually make the, the piece that was getting inserted uh, obviously following the same pattern, because it's obviously producing a perfect result there. The nice thing is that although you can actually do this uh, technique also on a, uh, a router table using a pattern copying bit, um, I can certainly see what's going on uh, very easily with this. Uh, much more like using a handheld router. Yeah, I've got the router is still you know, fully secured in the Torque Work Center, and I've got good two-hand control over the, uh, the router itself. So that's the uh, Torque Work Center uh, using the pattern copying bit to, in this case, actually duplicate a pattern.